Hey, how you doing? It's Joe from Queens, New York. I'm here uh, going to shave again. Going to do another shave uh, for you. I'm going to pick out a nice razor. I have my razors out. Most of my razors, I have others, but these are some of them. I'm going to do a, uh, a shave. But before I shave today, I think we're going to have a little something to drink. Uh, I don't know if you know what this is, if you've ever seen this before. Uh, this is a bottle of seltzer. Uh, growing up in Queens, we used to have a seltzer man who used to come and deliver the seltzer to us. And he'd bring us cases of seltzer and soda. And we, we made this uh, terrific drink. Uh, it was called an egg cream. There was no egg in it and there was no cream in it. But uh, we called it an egg cream. And, and you can still get them today uh, in restaurants in New York like Junior's and old-fashioned luncheonettes that are around still. So uh, what I want to do today, I want to make an egg cream. Now there's only one syrup to use, that's uh, Fox's You Bet. They're located in Brooklyn, New York, and they still make uh, vanilla syrup, uh, chocolate syrup, uh, different flavored syrups that are used in fountains. But the only way to make one of these drinks is to use the, uh, the Fox's You Bet brand. You can't use any other brand. If you use another brand, it just won't be the same. It's gotta be this Fox's You Bet. That's the only brand you can use. You can't use anything else. So we put a little bit of uh, chocolate syrup in the glass. And now we just add a little bit of milk. A little bit of milk. We used to use whole milk. Now we use 1%, 2%, fat-free, whatever. And now the uh, magic ingredient. This man, a uh, very good friend of mine, a very nice man. His name is Walter Backerman. He's third-generation seltzer man. He still delivers... Uh, seltzer his, his father his grandfather they used to deliver seltzer years ago uh, uh, in New York and he still he still delivers seltzer and uh, this is where I get my seltzer from so we're gonna make the egg cream now we're gonna add the seltzer and the the pounds per square inch from this compared to what you would buy in a can or a bottle you know, this is about 80 pounds per square inch it's a uh, you, you won't get it from just the regular a regular uh, can or a regular bottle from the supermarket. So I walk it comes by every so often. And I even went with him on a trap one day. That was fun. And he brings me seltzer. Look at that, huh? All this is, it's a magic drink. But all it is is Fox's you bet milk, and this magic bottle of seltzer. And I made these wonderful, wonderful egg creams. And I'm going to have one before my shave, before I pick out my razor today. And you might be wondering what I'm going to do with these, uh, with the second egg cream that I made, this uh, extra egg cream. Well, it just so happens we're very lucky. We have a friend with us today, the man who's responsible for, for bringing all this joy to people's homes. Uh, I'm going to put something underneath, uh, you know, show you. Uh, he's got... Uh, YouTube videos also of him delivering seltzer and all about his life. Uh, I'm going to put the link on if you if you if you have time. So enjoyable. It's it's so interesting to watch uh, uh, Walter the seltzer man, Walter Backman. But this other egg cream is for Walter, and we're lucky enough to have him here. Walter, come on over. Hi, Joe. How are you? Good to see oh, you. Pull the chair over. Sit Thank down. You. Let everybody see you there. This is Walter Backman. He's a seltzer man. He's third generation seltzer man, and uh, we're going to say Lachaim. Lachaim. Because I know that Chai means life. I know that's, that's good. I have a cousin up in Attica. He's doing Chai, so I know that means life, right? Yeah. Mm. That's delicious. So Walter, tell me something about the seltzer business. Everybody's, you know, from all over the world watching me shave all the time. Tell them something about the seltzer business. Well, in your life. it's a little like a razor blade. You razor blade, you foam up your skin. And the seltzer bottle foams up your glass, bubbles, delicious bubbles. And if you want, if you get a chance, you know, come over, hang out with us. Joe's going to make you an egg cream. That's it. Yeah. If you're in New York, uh, let me know. You know, we, uh, I got to get to uh, the, uh, the shaving store in Manhattan there, Pastor's, the uh, drugstore. There's a drugstore in Manhattan. Everybody goes to uh, called Pastor's on 34th Street. Okay. Anything you can think of for shaving, you can find there from all over the world. 34th and where? 34th, I think, off of Park. Oh, that's interesting. And I have to get there. But this you can't find in stores. This, you have to know a Walter. And there's only, how many seltzer men are left? Uh, 
Probably a handful. Used to, hand. they used to be hundreds and thousands. They were like thousands of salesmen. And now there's uh, a, a handful. And Walter's one of the few. He's been, uh, this has been his life, you know, and uh, he's brought uh, the, this bottle. You know how I always talk, if my razors could talk, you know, uh, different people who's had them, whose houses they've been in. Same thing with this seltzer bottle. You know, he takes back the seltzer bottle when it's empty and he, he refills it, he cleans it, he refills it. I don't know. How old would you say the seltzer bottle is? I would say uh, in uh, less than two weeks, I'm going to be 61. And most of the bottles are older than I am. You know, in fact, when I was born in 1952, my father already had a, a burgeoning round. You know, he started in 1945 and he was buying lots of bottles in, in, in that time when I was born because it was the heyday of the business. All you had to do was get a, you know, it cost that, it wasn't cheap. It cost $17.50. For a case of ten bottles in a wooden box, and if you figure that in uh, these current times, if you extrapolate the value of the bottles, it would be like two hundred dollars a case. But you can get them. All you had to do was order them up, and uh, like this particular bottle, I don't know if you can see the bottom. It was made in Czechoslovakia, and it would have probably been made right around the World War II or right after that. And they imported the seltzer bottle from Czechoslovakia. They acid etched your name with a uh, silk screen. And they impressed your name in the top. So, uh, uh, by and large, most of the bottles are on average from the 1940s and 50s. However, my grandfather had a horse and wagon in 1919. I still got bottles in the route from that period. So, some of them are 80 years old, 90 years, 100 wow. years old, 110 they, years they old. They could only talk those bottles. And they're still used. The tables they were on, all over wherever in the world they were, all over the country, all over the world. Just like the races, if these races, some of these old races, you know, this one's a, a, a tech. This is from the uh, looks like early the, 50s, late 40s. Right. I don't know who owned this last. I don't know. Don't uh, know. You know, well, this one is, is also from that period. It's a uh, chic. It's nice. It's a chic. You know, who knows uh, who owned them, who shaved with them. Same thing, who, whose table has this bottle been on, you know? Yeah, who drank it? And who yeah. drank it? And what yeah. was their family like? And what, what else was on the table? When they and were not only that, that people just drank it. I've actually... In the last like 10 or 20 years, I, I've rented a lot of bottles of TV shows. They want all my children, wow. One Life to Live. I just had them on 30 Rock movies. You know, sometimes they call you want to have a period theme and they, they use the seltzer bottles. I mean, it's uh, it's incredible. One time, Susan Lucci and all my children held one of my father's bottles, an Al Backman bottle. They did wow. it for me as a favor. Wow. And it was a very pivotal scene. And I, like I was thrilled to you know, have my father's bottle you know, being seen on national TV. And then when my niece got married a few weeks later, she asked me for a, one of her grandfather's bottles. So I gave her that bottle that was on TV. And it's a funny thing, I went to replace that bottle. That particular bottle was an Al Backman bottle. It was from the 1950s. It was a dark blue bottle like this. And I was delivering to, at that time, it was an ABC. The studio was shared. All my children was on one side of the studio. And the other side was The View. It was a TV show with Bob Walters. And I delivered to both of those shows. I have customers in both of them. And I was downstairs watching The View. And uh, it was 12.30. Basically, the show was live from 11 to 12. But one day a week, they also film another show for Friday because the people wanted to have a three-day weekend. And it was 12.30. And I was in the, in the dressing rooms watching Closed Circuit TV with Bill Geddes, who's Barbara Walters' co-producer, co-executive producer. And I said to Bill, I see Sandra Bullock on there. Man, I always loved Sandra Bullock. Yeah, me too. When did they, <laughs> well, too. and she's cute. And I said, when did, they, when did they film it? I thought he was watching old footage. And he said, no, they're doing it right now. They're, they're you know, banking that show for Friday. And I said, it's a shame. I wish I had been here 20 minutes early when she would have been in the dressing rooms. I could have met her. So we were on the second floor in, in you know, the dressing rooms. And we're about to go upstairs. And I want to go back to all my children because I had the replacement bottle, an Al Backman seltzer bottle, to put back on the set of all my children, you know, for Susan Lucci, for, for the set. And as soon as the elevator opened, you know, like, I see this very cute looking woman. And for the minute, I can't place the face because it's a funny thing. It doesn't matter. You're watching on TV. Uh, you, you can see her in the movies. You know you know her, but for the minute, your brain, like, it freezes. You don't, it doesn't register who the woman is. And all of a sudden, I looked at her, and then I realized it was Sandra Bullock. And I thought that Sandra Bullock would never, you know, she was like from Texas or somewhere, never would have had any concept of what a seltzer bottle was. And I had three cases on a hand truck, all blue and green, and on the top was my Al Backman bottle that my father, 
you know, used when I was a baby and I wanted to put back on the set. And as soon as the elevator opened and I see Sandra Bullock, it was an instant recognition to a point. But then when I realized actually who she really was, I thought that she'd say, oh, hi, smile at me and we go. And said she said to me, wow, where'd you get all those seltzer bottles? I love them. Yeah. And once I heard that I from her, too. you know what I did? I took the uh, hand truck with the three cases and I put it down by the eye sensor to the elevator and all the handles are trying to get rid of her. They're giving me like dagger looks and she was smiling and happy. And I said, oh, do you know what this tells about us? Oh, I love them. I have actually two in my apartment, I think she said in Texas. And I said, uh, well, you want another one? I said, I watched, I said, I remember watching a movie with my father, Speed. And my father thought you were cute. And I said, my father's gone. You know, and I said, you couldn't buy this bottle for a thousand dollars, but my father liked you, I like you, and I think if I gave it to you, he'd be smiling in heaven. And I handed her the bottle and she said to me, I can't take it. I said, please. And she gave me a hug and it was like crazy. And then, then she, I asked her, you know, something, you really like seltzer that much? Maybe one time I could bring you a seltzer if you have an apartment in New York. And it turned out she did, but she was hardly ever here. And I told her to, you know, give me a call, never happened. And to the day, my son, who's delivered with me to people like Sarah Jessica Parker's house and and you know, a whole list of movie stars, and he loves Sex in the City. He loves Sandra Bullock even more. And every time we watch one of the movies, he says to me, I can't believe you didn't get her as a customer. I would have loved to have met her. But that was one bow. You see, it goes to one person, it comes from a set, from a TV show, and Susan Lucci holds it, goes to Sandra Bullock, and and you know, and people drink it. So you don't know the history of the bottle, but each one has a special story to tell, and that's just one of many, one of many of the thousands I could tell you. Wow, wonderful. Anyway, he mentioned Czechoslovakia, where that uh, bottle came from. I have this just came to me from Hungary. It's an wow. aftershave. I'm going to use this uh, in honor of that bottle of seltzer. Yeah, I got a, I got Hungarian I'm seltzer bottles. I think I'm yeah. going to put it with your uh, shaving kit. Yeah, maybe we'll put it together there. Excellent. All right. So uh, thank you, Walter, for being with us. Uh, pleasure. I'm, I'm glad I came to bring your seltzer at the time you're making air cream because I was I was uh, you're thirsty from the round. Thirsty, all day. thirsty. I so know. take care, everyone. Pleasure. I'll see you in a few minutes. We're going to go into the shave. Then I'm going to shave. Uh, we had a special guest, so we ran a little long, but terrific. So uh, take care. I'll see you in a few minutes. Don't go away. I'll see you in the shave then. Well, hi. Wasn't that great? Uh, Walter was here with us uh, at the shave then. Uh, we talked about seltzer and shaving. and Fantastic. Uh, just to save time, uh, I started. I put on my pre-shave because we ran a little bit long. Uh, I call it Joe Rasso. It's like a uh, Parasso pre-shave cream. It's really... Uh, like a Natsima uh, with some essential oils in it, you know, made my own. And I have a new brush, it's a uh, Samoke, it's an 830, it's a boar brush, it's a 22 millimeter knot, and it's got a 55 millimeter loft to it, and uh, we used uh, a little uh, of my pre-shave, I put on a little bit of this Parasso as a uh, and face lathering, and that's the uh, sandalwood. And I'm also going to be cheating a little, but I like a good lather. So I'm cheating today, and I'm using Omega from Italy, Omega Crema de Barba. Look at that. I'm going to face lather up quick. We try to cut the shave down time-wise a little bit. We had so much fun with the air creams. Uh, seltzer egg creams uh, there's a couple of sites you know Walter's site you know he doesn't have his own site but uh, Walter uh, has a few videos on uh, they came from uh, in Japan they did a professional video about him it's on YouTube I'll, I'll try to post it so you'll see uh, it's terrific I'm using my Gillette uh, new it's called the Gillette new it's from the 30s it's got a uh, a Macaw bladed Macaw Super, and I've used it once before. This is the second time I'm using it. It's a special shave. We had an egg cream, right? Walter was here. There's a, a site too, also on, on Facebook, it's called Gimme Seltzer. There's a lot of crazy people like me to enjoy these things. And they talk about seltzers. He's writing a, a guy named Barry Joseph. He's writing a book all about seltzer. And uh, talks about Walter and some other of the seltzer men that are still around. I mean, years ago, you know, New York and other parts of the country, 
you were seltzermen with horses and buggies and delivering uh, seltzer to people's homes, but now most people go to the supermarket and buy a bottle or a can. Not the same. Not the same. You don't get that uh, amount of uh, bubbly. The pounds per square inch, the uh, carbon uh, dioxide. And then if you open up a can or a bottle, if you don't use it right away, it goes flat. Whereupon the, these bottles, they don't. Plus, you know, the nostalgia of having them growing up, having them again. You know, I'm still in the same neighborhood I grew up in, but even when I wasn't, I managed to get some seltzer and have it wherever I was. But it's hard to find nowadays. It's hard to find that stuff. We can also list uh, a gentleman by the name of R.J. Lionheart. Uh, uh, gave me some comments on my YouTube videos. Some helpful hints, very good. One of them was to list the ingredients that I'm using. Tools of the trade, you know. Separately, I want to do that. And he also told me not to uh, dry in between, uh, against the grain, with the grain, across the grain. Uh, he told me just to rinse and relather, leave it wet. I want to do that. And then he also told me to use the bomb after the aftershave, use the bomb last. I'm going to do that today. Well, thank you, RJ Lionheart. He's a local guy from the Bronx. He's not far from here. Okay. So that was our first application. And we're going to take our uh, smoke. My first smoke, I just got this. I'm going to lather up again. And do our second pass. Because I have about a three day growth. And I'm using a, a good old razor. A razor like Al Capone might have used in the 19th. Look at the, the workmanship in that thing. Huh? Beautiful razor. If only you could talk. Who had this when it was new? Who's had it in between? Who's going to have it next? Probably my son. Because he shaves also. He's just gotten into this uh, wet shaving. My son, he's 19. Maybe he'll start making some videos. I'm just going to do the light shave. I'm going to shave it in tomorrow before work. So I'm not going to do uh, the uh, BBS tonight. It's a light shave. A couple of passes. You know, running out of time, too. And then I'll do a light shave tomorrow before work. Okay. Get a rinse, hot. Not bad. Tomorrow we'll touch it up. Cold. Hot and then cold, right? And just a quick alum. Just a quick one. Save time tonight. And like I showed you before, this is from uh, Hungary. I got it on. Uh, Amazon or eBay, one of them. And my son has a friend in uh, Poland. So he lives here, but he comes from Poland. And he goes back to Poland on the uh, summer vacations from school, and he uses a, uh, a European aftershave. And he told me about it, and um, I said, "You know what? Let me see if I can find it." And I found it online, and I ordered it. And it came all the way from Poland. It's called Straits. A little pricey. Look, look at this. There, look at this box. Huh? Ooh. Huh? Look at that. This is, uh, I got this from Hungary. So this is a European pro. Look at this. Nice box. It's a metal box. And it's called Straits. And uh, my son likes this. It's European. I can't quite make out what country. It's probably Eastern Europe. 
on it to look later. Got a magnifying glass on my glasses. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Ooh. Right, smell it. Hmm. You're right. I think the people in Europe, all you know, the continents, you know, here we just shave quickly with a cartridge. They take their time and they shave and use fragrances and they, they're, I think they're uh, a little bit ahead of us with the that department you know all right so we did that and I was gonna use uh, some uh, balm to finish up but I don't see where I quite put it yeah, there it is it's hiding I'm gonna use a little rise uh, balm I used to use this and then use the other thing but on J line he said no 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 do it this way all right, so you get a chance, watch Walter's uh, seltzer videos, so interesting. Give me seltzer, Barry Joseph, uh, my shaving, and uh, a little taste of New York for you. So that's it for this week. So have a, have a good, uh, good, good uh, week if I don't talk to you uh, by next week for another shave. Or until I talk to you again for another shave. And uh, stay well, all the best to you and your family. Have a, a good autumn. And uh, we'll talk to you soon. Thanks for joining me for, for my shave and my company that I had and having the air cream with us. And uh, we'll talk to you next time. So in the meantime, take care. Bye-bye.